Welcome back to Face the Nation. And we are back now with some analysis. Michael Morell is a CBS national security contributor and the former deputy director of the CIA. Lucius Outlaw is professor of law at Howard University. And Larry Pfeiffer is the director of the Hayden Center here in Washington and a former White House official. Good morning to all of you. Um, and I'm hoping you can sort of give us a few bottom lines on what is a developing story here. Larry, I want to start with you because you ran the White House Situation Room as its senior director. So you know how the current president, when he was vice president, interacted with classified material. Um, just blanket statement, anyone who keeps documents marked top secret in their personal possession would face a high degree of scrutiny. When is it a criminal act? Uh, it becomes a criminal act, I think, when there's intention to remove the documents to a location. Um, in, in my experience, 32 years in the intel community, time at the White House, you know, accidents happen. These are paper documents. People carry them in folders. Um, you know, sometimes they, they walk out with them and, 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 and they will discover that they've taken them. And when they discover that they've taken them by accident, they will quickly return them or have somebody return them uh, to appropriate location. And I think that's what happened here. Why do you think that? Well, just from at least what, what we've heard so far, it looks to me like um, somebody probably unknowingly took some mixed group of papers, threw them in a box, and uh, and then they got shipped off to the residents. I think we heard that some you of the doctors- You think it's a staff problem, that yeah. they also were touching this classified information? Oh, yeah, I'm, I, I sincerely doubt that Joe Biden himself threw these things in a box and, and, and shipped them off to the White House. I'm sure, I'm, I'm sorry to his residents. I'm sure that this was a staff, a staff issue, it was some, some aide who, in a hurry in the last days of the administration, was just grabbing materials and throwing them in a box. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we even heard that it was in, some of this material was in boxes that included material about his son's funeral. So they may have seen, you know, son Bo Biden funeral arrangements and thought, oh, okay, let's just put this in a box, not realizing that there were other documents intermingled. Um, Mike Morrell, you were the deputy CIA director, as, as we mentioned. Um, you know how to take classified material into your home in a secure fashion. I imagine not in a garage, uh, necessarily, as the president said there. Um, but for six years, these documents were in private p possession. Is there a risk there? Margaret, there is absolutely a risk anytime there are classified documents um, that are not in a controlled facility. And as you said, um, you know, there's a number of years where these documents um, were not handled properly. So there is absolutely a risk. Um, I believe that the intelligence community needs to do a damage assessment. Uh, House intelligence committees asked for that. They deserve it, um, just as they do in the case of uh, former President Trump. Uh, it, so one of the questions that's come up, um, and, and Lucius, perhaps you, uh, Professor Atlaw, I, perhaps you can weigh in here. Um, this also came up with the Trump case. If it's not the president himself packing up the classified material, if there are other aides, they also may have legal exposure here. Um, we know that one of those uh, staffers was questioned, Kathy Chung. She currently works at the Pentagon. She was an assistant. Is somebody like that here at great legal risk? Well, there's always going to be some risk, but it's really going to come down to intent. Was there some kind of criminal intent, or was this negligence or even recklessness? And I think that's what the Department of Justice is going to really weigh out. And when it comes to the president's, I really don't think the DOJ is going to go towards a criminal prosecution about classified documents, because there's so many open legal questions about presidents and classified documents and whether or not those criminal statutes apply to presidents. And Garland and the DOJ know that those questions will end up at the Supreme Court. And they can have no confidence that in a legal fight with Trump, or even with Biden, but mo mostly with Trump, that they will be successful in a fight against Trump at the Supreme Court about executive power and the use of power by Trump. So in both cases, the 45th president and the current one, you don't think that there will actually end up being any prosecutions? I don't think there'll be prosecutions in regards to crim about classified information. The obstruction, that's a completely different story. And I think we already see signs that's where the DOJ is headed in terms of Trump. When they serve the warrant, the warrant application specifies the actual criminal statutes that they're investigating. Not one of those statutes mm -hmm. has anything to do with classified materials. Most of the statutes have to do with obstruction. And I think that's the cleanest 
best path because it doesn't matter if you're a president. Either you obstruct or you didn't. You don't have presidential power to obstruct justice. So I think that is the easiest and most likely course for the DOJ. So, Larry Pfeiffer, if you could weigh in here. Um, we heard from Dan Goldman, a congressman, that he thinks it's entirely appropriate in terms of how the White House is handling this and the president's private attorneys. Should they be sending, in your view, lawyers with no, no security clearances to search for classified documents? And then should White House attorneys be involved in any way in this case? Well, uncleared people should not be searching through boxes looking for classified material because it, it now exposes classified material to somebody who shouldn't be seeing it. Um, my understanding is that some of these individuals may have previously had clearances, which maybe attenuates the circumstances a little bit. Um, whether it's White House lawyers are involved or not, I, I think that's a, dis a discretion of the president as to whom perhaps he trusts. Uh, as an intelligence professional for 30 plus years, I think I would have liked to have seen maybe an intelligence or a security professional going and doing these searches. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it is what it is at this point. Mike Morrell, you know, when this issue came to the forefront with uh, former President Trump, one of the defenses of him was, well, there's overt classification, and therefore maybe these documents aren't that sensitive. And then, of course, news agencies, including CBS, reported that many of these hundreds of documents actually were um, very sensitive. But what is your view here? Is there a broader issue that two pretty significant men have had this level of issue handling classified information. Margaret, I think there is a broader issue, but it's not overclassification. I worked at the CIA for 33 years. Um, I did not see information um, classified to a level where, where I questioned whether that was appropriate or not. I think the broader issue is now we have two cases of former White Houses as they pack up to leave mishandling classified information. So we have a legal review here by the special counsel. We're going to have a damage assessment on these documents by the intelligence community. I think we need a separate bipartisan task force that looks at how White Houses handle classified information throughout an administration, but particularly at the end. And I think they need to make recommendations going forward so that these documents are handled with much greater rigor. Much greater rigor, what does that mean? Harsher penalties? No, I think it means that um, a special group of individuals, um, perhaps from the partly from the intelligence community, um, but also from the National Security Council, need to go through every box that leaves the White House um, at the end of an administration to make sure that there aren't classified documents in it. Uh, Professor, um you know, some of the critics and certainly part of the political framing of this is the lack of transparency with the public, um, which we talked about with Ed O'Keefe earlier. Um, it was CBS News that broke this story, and then the government acknowledged it. Is that appropriate? Um, do you think there's anything legally to back up the White House argument that they just couldn't say anything at all? Right. I mean, there's a political question and a legal question. I'm not I'm gonna, asking on the legal On the legal side, no. It, they what could matters, have. They, they could have with the public. What matters most legally is what did they communicate and when to the proper government authorities? Mm -hmm. Was there a delay there? Was there an attempt to impede any kind of investigation? That is what matters legally. Now, what they say in the public may shed light on intent if there's some other charges, but legally, I don't think that's puts them in any jeopardy that they chose to wait to tell the public something they already told the proper government officials. Mm -hmm. but I ask you that because we often hear at the White House podium, this is about process. We couldn't go out of the pro outside the process because it, it could impede an ongoing investigation. Right. And they, two things can be true. One, they don't want to impede an investigation, but also they don't want to impact or negatively impact themselves politically right. or midterms or anything of that nature. Two things can be true. Right. Two things can be true, absolutely. <laughs> it is Washington, there is a lot of gray, and there is a lot of nuance. But um, uh, Larry Pfeiffer, in the case of Trump, it was more than 300 pages of, of classified information, as we talked about higher levels at, in some sensitivity, um, prolonged legal back and forth. But to what degree does that matter versus that question of intent? Um, you know, you're giving the president the benefit of the doubt that mm -hmm. this was an accident. The former president was accused of of doing many things potentially with this information. Well, I think um, 
the, the volume of the material could actually um, suggest intent. I mean, this was 300 classified documents um, among 11,000 other documents that, that were taken from the White House. Uh, that, that just doesn't happen by accident. That ha there has to be some intent there. Um, now, I, when this story first broke, I, I was one who actually was somewhat willing to give some benefit of the doubt because I've seen these accidents happen in the past. But as that story unfolded, uh, it became pretty clear that, and, and, and given the obstruction, given the uh, uh, reluctance to cooperate, uh, it suggests uh, there may be uh, you know, more, more criminal issues at play with mm -hmm. the Trump situation. Um, and Mike Morrell, we talked about this as well, that the lack of clarity in some ways in terms of the ability to declassify information. Um, I've been talking in recent days to lawyers, too, about when does the vice president get to declassify versus a president. Uh, in your view, does there need to be more sort of um, clarity on what a president can declassify and when? So a president can declassify um, almost anything, not everything, but almost anything that's been classified by the executive branch. The vice president does not have that authority. Um, he's not claiming that in this case. Um, I just want to go back, Margaret, to, to what you said at the very beginning. Um, in both of these cases, we have some top secret documents. That means that those who classified those documents believe that if they get into the wrong hands, there could be exceptionally grave damage to national security. So we have to stay focused on this in terms of, of these individual cases, but how do we prevent this from happening going forward? Mm -hmm. All right, Mike Morrell, thank you for your analysis. Uh, Professor Larry, thank you as, much, as well for joining us.